Hey, my name is Jody Lynn and I am the Artisan's Pen. I would like to talk to you for a second and if you don't mind, I would like to talk to you about something that is relevant considering the season that we are in. It's Pentecost! <laughs> the second of the festivals instituted by the Lord. Now, many times you hear people talking about it, and when they do, they also mention the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and you might even experience the taking of communion elements, which are symbols that represent the real. But we're told by Jesus in John chapter 4, verse 24, that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So what I want to talk to you about is the symbolic versus the spiritual. I want to take this moment to look beyond the natural and look beyond the traditions of men where Many go through the motions of eating literal unleavened bread in the form of wafers or the matzo crackers and drinking kosher wine or grape or cranberry juice. Let me ask you this question. Is there any real and intrinsic value to doing that? Do you feel changed? If you do, that's good. But many don't feel a difference. For many, they're just going through the motions. And for that reason, I would like to share with you a practical application that is actually proven to be beneficial. You see, Jesus said that his blood was the wine and that his body was the bread. But we are told today that it's all about the symbolism. And yet the meaning of the symbolism is missed. That is why the symbols are empty. Let's look at some examples. Let's start by looking at the bread. And let's consider this interaction that Jesus had with Satan that's found in chapter 4 of both Matthew and Luke. Satan was testing Jesus. And knowing that Jesus was hungry, he told Jesus to turn some stones into bread. Now, Jesus responded by saying that we don't live by bread alone, but by every utterance that comes forth from the mouth of God. So it's not a flattened cracker that means anything. Instead, it is the word of God that is the true unleavened bread. When you eat from the word of God by reading God's word, it is then that you are truly eating of the body of Christ, which is the true unleavened bread. By the way, leaven is a yeast that causes dough to rise, just like pride causes a swelling in the heart. So the real application of removing what is unleavened from one's home is to remove pride from our lives by getting it out of our hearts. I want to talk to you one second about pride. Today, pride is found in a lot of areas. Sometimes pride shows up in the feeling of being right because we're law abiding. Sometimes pride shows up in the feeling of being better than because we don't have addictions to drugs or we don't smoke or we're not alcoholic or, you know, we don't have any court issues. But because I am predominantly writing this for the Christian, the one that says they believe in Christ. The one that feels that they're not worldly because they go to church every week. I want to address the area of religious pride. I came across this scripture today in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 that speaks volumes in the area of religious pride. Now, I encourage you to go and read it in your spare time. Again, that's Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. But as an overview, basically, it's saying that we should not find our righteousness in the law, meaning that we shouldn't take pride in our being law-abiding citizens with no issues with courts and police and no vices and such. But instead, our righteousness should be found in our faith in God. Moving on, now let's look at the wine. Jesus said that his blood was the wine. In the blood is found our life. 
When the blood drains out of our bodies, so does the life ebb away. So wine represents life or a lifestyle or a habit. Therefore, partaking of the bread and wine is making the reading of God's word a habit, a lifestyle. Are you partaking of the bread and wine? Jesus said that as often as you do it, to do it in remembrance of him. Are you remembering Jesus? Do you eat a crumb of bread and drink a shot of wine once a month at church under the heading of communion? Are you really communicating with God by eating the crumb and drinking the shot? And does that piece of bread and shot of wine have any real meaning? Is it making any real change in your life? But to read God's word and to live what you read will cause a great change to be experienced in your life. So now you have a choice between breads and wines. You can choose the literal bread and wine with the symbolic meaning or you can choose the spiritual bread that is the real bread according to Jesus. And the spiritual wine that is allowing the word of God to become your lifestyle. One, the literal one, has a bland taste. But in reference to the spiritual one, we are told at Psalm 34, 8, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Which will you prefer? The symbolic or the spiritual? Have a blessed rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>